Okay. Bye. Um, Sorry, it took me a moment to get connected. No worries. Um, we are, you are just in time and we're getting ready to start. So um, we'll give um, you the floor. Go ahead and kick us off. Hi, good evening. Um, I apologize. I'm trying to get oriented. I had to step out of an in-person meeting, which is so unusual nowadays. Um, welcome to everyone who's joining us and um, want to thank, first of all, um, Gari, um, our VP for Volunteers and Membership, and to the amazing College Preparedness uh, Committee who uh, put together uh, this first event and the entire series for the PTO. Um, just to give people some perspective, um, first of all, my name is Maria Calzada. I'm a parent here at Carnegie. I'm the president of the PTO and I am a survivor. Um, I have one child who is a freshman in college, so it can be done. Um, I have a freshman at Carnegie as well, so I have one more to go. Um, I uh, This is something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I think that we all have a concept of how this is going to go. Uh, whether your child is gifted and talented or struggles or both. Uh, I think we all kind of have a preconceived idea of how uh, we think the college application process is going to um, move. Um, and obviously everyone knows that there's gonna be some bumps along the way. Um, but having gone through this process uh, over the last two years, junior and senior year, I can tell you that it's not what you think it's going to be. And I felt like uh, my husband and I were proactive. We went to all of these talks. <laughs> we went to um, every possible presentation that was given to us. Um, I, I was active in the PTO. I, I went to um, everything for freshmen, for sophomores, for juniors, for seniors. And there were still things that really, really surprised us. So that is not to discourage people from being a part of this presentation, because this, I think, is a very unique opportunity. Um, I think that everything that we have planned is with um, all of these bumps in the road in mind. So I'm hoping that being a part of this presentation will help everyone. Um, nothing is perfect. But um, I hope that we really focus in on the unique population that we have at Carnegie, which are a lot of really bright students, but a lot of students that have um, more options and different opportunities than most. And um, I, I can't thank uh, Ms. Galloway enough for being our first speaker. So um, with that in mind, take it away. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. First, um, I just want to say, I think my first physical contact with the PTO was at the um, APSPBA co-hosted um, fair. And it was just from there, we just kind of hit it off. And so I just want to thank you guys for even just bringing this to parents. I think the students like to gatekeep a lot of this information, which they shouldn't. <laughs> and so I usually tell the students that they're not my friends, but um, their moms and dads are. So thank you guys for giving me, I guess, you know, the platform to just kind of talk to you guys and stuff like that. Um, Donovan actually said amazing things about you guys when we were doing our transition. <laughs> So I'm excited to be working with you guys um, throughout the remainder of the school year. But we do, this is a series, so kind of won't go too super 
in depth, but this is probably gonna be a little bit more high level. And then kind of as we go through the other um, sections in the series, we'll kind of get a little bit more like z z zoned in or like more in depth. But we can go ahead and we can um, go to the next slide. So just a little bit about who your students are gonna be working with. Um, good afternoon or good evening. My name is Sinead Galloway um, and I'm a college and career readiness advisor with HISD College Readiness. Um, as of right now, Mondays and Wednesdays, I am at Carnegie. So that's where I am all day. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm at DeBakey. And then I just recently inherited HSPVA. I know Mr. Rosa last year had all three but they kind of did a shift, but um, the advisor, she wanted to do great things. And so I'm just temporarily stepping in until they find someone up permanently. So I do support all these campuses at this current moment. Um, next slide. So just a little bit about me. I am from Houston, but I am a product of Fort Bend. I did go to Travis um, High School. So summer of kid, I still live over here. Actually, got to move closer because the traffic is horrendous. It's terrible compared to when I was living in San Antonio. Um, but before being at Carnegie and DeBakey, I was at Worthing for about three years. And so I was their college advisor there. So big differences so far, but for the most part, it's a very well-rounded um, holistic experience. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. Next slide. So these are just kind of like some of the students that I've worked with in the past years, um, just kind of a little background information. I started, I literally moved from San Antonio, maybe, and I started with HISD maybe three weeks before COVID. So I was excited. I was on the job. I was doing it from a nonprofit standpoint. So to be more in schools, I was excited. I was on campus for three weeks and I'm like, all right, we're in the house. And I was like, oh, all right, cool. So this is kind of like, I guess my first um, time really getting to like be out in schools um, considering COVID and all that stuff. So that's the next slide. And I usually show this to the students. Um, so I was like, I might as well show it to the parents. But I did go to UTSA. I got a bachelor's in psychology. And I'm currently in grad school at the University of Houston. So go Cougs. I'm getting my master's in higher education. Um, after this semester, hopefully I'll be walking in, in May. I'll just have one more full semester and I'm almost done. But I usually let the students know that um, I know the college application process can be very um, strenuous and tedious. And I just kind of let them know that especially while they're in school, it could be a lot to juggle, but I try to let them know that I'm kind of doing the same thing. And so if they need any tips, if they need support that I'm here, but it is, it is a struggle, <laughs> but you know, we're going to get through it. Uh, next slide. And then that's just a little bit about me. Um, I did AmeriCorps for two years. I did city year. I like to travel. That's my dog. That's pretty much what I like to do. Travel with my dog. I'm in school. And um, I guess, you know, when I can go to concerts, but that's pretty much it for me. And so that's who your students and that's who you guys will be working with, hopefully for the next couple of years, because I really do like my campuses. Um, so this is who you guys will be working with. Uh, next slide. Hopefully I'll see you guys at the social tomorrow. Um, and so this is, like I said, this is what we show the students. The, for the most part, this is the same slide that we show the students. Um, so the mission statement. So me as their college advisor, this is what I'm designed to do. So empower them to launch their futures, fulfill their careers through uh, various pathways based on their academic profile, their strengths, their interests, their goals, and stuff like that. So that's kind of the mission statement for what HISD has for their launch seniors. And so now let's just talk about pathways and admissions. So what are students' options um, after high school? How do they get in? And we'll kind of go a little bit deeper into this, I think, in the building your college list um, session. But We'll touch on it a little briefly. And so for the most part, um, students have a few options. So they can go to the two-year route, the four-year route, or the military, which I don't really hear too much of since transitioning um, to the new campuses. For, but for the most part, it's mainly been four years. Um, but um, I know at DeBakey, a lot of students, what they'll do is, is they'll go to HCC, they'll get their prereqs out the way, and then they'll apply to the UT Health Science Center, whether that be here in Houston, San Antonio, and so forth. So just kind of for one, getting to know what the student wants to do after they graduate, what their career goal is, and just letting them know all the different options that they can get there, because there is more than one way that they can get there. And so just letting them know their pathways. But for the most part, since I've been at the campus, it's mainly four years. <laughs> That's the route that um, everyone's choosing. And so the college application process, which has shifted a little bit considering COVID. Um, and so a lot of um, colleges and universities, what they're doing is they're doing a holistic review. And so considering during COVID, we, students could not take the test. Colleges and universities have to come up with different ways for how to review students, which most highly selective um, schools were doing anyway. But I know when I was in high school, um, you had to have a pretty good SAT score or you were not getting into a four-year university. And so I think a lot of students um, during these past two, three years, they've kind of had the 
the availability and the option to kind of go a few places. They just kind of had to tell their story in a unique way. And so one way that students can do that is with their personal statements. Uh, but I will say students at Carnegie are like very great writers. And so I think Carnegie does do a really great job of preparing them from ninth up until um, 12th grade. So I've read some really good personal statements. Um, for the most part, I usually tell students, I will print it out, I'll go old school, red pen, mark it up, and then send it back to them. And I usually tell them, of course, I'm not an English teacher, they should definitely get more than one view, more, more than one perspective. But it's more so I kind of read it from the lens of an admissions counselor. And so for example, um, kind of, I'm like, hey, get rid of this part, but pull more on this. Um, and just letting them know they have to be in a very re reflective space when they're writing um, their personal statements. And then also, I don't think students understand, but they do have to utilize College Board and Naviance. If time permits towards the end, if it's okay, if I could share my screen and kind of walk you guys through Naviance and what all students do on there, why it's so important, um, I think that would be helpful as well. Um, but we can go to the next slide. Ms. Galloway, I just wanted to interrupt for one quick second and let all the parents know that as of this morning, um, Mr. Frau has sent out each parent's Naviance um, entrance code to oh, their great. child. Yes, so every, every student at CVHS should have received um, a Naviance code that they can share with their parents. So if the student has not shared it with you yet, ask them uh, for the code. It just went out today. Awesome, thank you. Yes, um, I send a lot of information uh, through Naviance. And so it usually, students and parents can log into Naviance, they can see that. But also when I send the emails, um, it goes straight to their, their HISD email. And then also if the parent is signed up, it goes to them too. And so, I put that link um, in the chat before we started to, you know, if you would like to get those emails, but also if you want to do it through Naviance, that's fine too. I just try to make sure that there's more than one way that um, students and parents are receiving information. So I'm glad you did that, awesome. Um, and so what do colleges consider? Um, I tell students GPA plays a very huge role in where you can go. For the most part, anyone can go to college. So if we have a student with maybe like a 1.9 GPA, I mean, they can go to college. It might be HCC. They go for a semester transfer. But for the most part, GPA and your SAT scores has a huge impact on where you can go. And so I usually tell students um, the primary thing that you want to focus a lot of your attention on, your GPA and your SAT scores, because that gives you more range as far as where you can go. And then also extracurricular um, activities play a role too. But honestly, I think it's going to be the essay too that kind of that also should go like in the primary section, but the essay plays a really huge role um, in where you can go, especially with those highly selective schools. Um, oftentimes a lot of students are like, well, miss, what do I need to do to get into rights? And it's kind of like, uh, you know, no one knows what it takes to get into those schools besides the people who are on those campuses. Um, they even tell us that when we go to counselor updates, like there's, they just, there's something that they're looking for. And if the student has it, then you know, the student has it. So uh, I usually tell students with the highest elective schools, just marketing yourself in the highest light possible. And we help them with that process as well. Um, and then demonstrated interest. Um, essentially that's, for example, if you have a freshman who would like to start doing things at UT Austin, and then maybe over the years, they continue to do that summer program that shows demonstrated interest. And so that can also play a role on admissions as well when they become a senior. Um, next slide. Okay, so as a freshman, um, a lot of freshmen, they were reaching out to me at the beginning of the school year, and they're like, you know, hey, Ms. Gala, I want to sit down. I want to talk about my options for college. Like, what do I need to start doing? They're very eager, <laughs> very, very eager. And so, um, honestly, I usually tell students, and our, our sessions don't last very long, because for the most part, as a freshman, your, your priority is maintaining your grades. Uh, whenever colleges receive your transcript as a senior, all they see is ninth, 10th, and 11th grade. That's all they see. And so we, if you really want to set the tone, it's going to be your freshman year. Um, and then oftentimes when they're a senior, they're like, well, I'm doing really well this semester in my senior year. Will that boost my GPA? And you have to think about you have the weight of ninth, 10th and 11th grade. And so doing well that first semester of your 12th grade you know, year, it looks good. However, for one, they probably won't see it. Um, and then also it's just you have the weight. It won't really fare well. So I usually tell freshmen for one. You just got to high school, you know, for one, soak it all in, you know, kind of experience the feels, but you really need to be maintaining um, your GPA, making sure your grades look good. However, 
you know, that's the that's the primary thing. But what comes second, of course, prepping for the SAT or the PSAT, if you want to qualify for national merit. Um, and then also, um, you know, attending college fairs, doing summer bridge programs. Um, those are kind of supplemental things that you can do for your freshman year. But the big thing is definitely going to be um, maintaining your grades and your GPA. Um, also, small, every HIZ student has access to Khan Academy. All they have to do, well, it's not the hub anymore, I believe it's Canvas. They just have to go to Canvas, go to digital resources. That's where they'll access Naviance, and that's also where they'll access Khan Academy. There's literally studies. Even if a student just spends maybe 30 minutes on Khan Academy a day, they can significantly improve their SAT score. Um, also, Khan Academy helps more so with content. I see why some parents maybe seek test masters because test masters mainly helps with like strategy, um, but Khan Academy helps with like content. So there's literally like studies that show like students who, if, even if it's just 30 minutes, 20 minutes a day, maybe an hour, three days out of the week, but just some kind of consistent practice consistent can just up their scores tremendously. So that's why we usually push Khan Academy. Also, if you're ever on the College Board website, which, you know, College Board administers the SAT, the AP test, College Board um, heavily signs off on Khan Academy as well. So it just kind of like makes sense. That's why we usually tell, have you been using Khan Academy? And we can track their hours and their minutes and stuff like that. But that's the main thing um, as a freshman, because one student was like, that's it. I'm like, yeah, that's it. Just make sure that your grades look good. It's harder to do. It's for the most part with ninth graders. And I understand like schools like Carnegie and DeBakey, it may take the students time to kind of adjust to like the rigor. They're taking five AP classes at one time. And so if you didn't do well your freshman year, uh, what you can really do, what really shows growth is like ninth. I mean, sorry, 10th and 11th grade shows growth. So for the most part, these admissions counselors know that Carnegie, DeBakey, HSPBA, you know, they're taking very rigorous classes, you know, it's an adjustment. And so, you know, they kind of can see that as long as there's growth from ninth, 10th grade, for the most part, your, your freshman will be fine. Um, next slide. And then as a sophomore, so sophomore is very similar um, to freshman, again, maintaining your grades and then prepping for the PSAT because more than likely their junior year, they're gonna be taking the SA, the PSAT, which, which can qualify them for national merit. Um, and so for the most part with the sophomores, the same thing, um, Carnegie has tons of great clubs. And so if students can kind of find out what their niche is or what their kind of like place on their campus is, that can oftentimes influence their personal statement, um, that can influence their um, extracurricular activities when it's time to list that stuff. And so for the most part for the sophomores, it's gonna be very similar to the freshmen. Um, they can do summer bridge programs during the summer. Um, some colleges have like fly-in programs. It kind of hasn't been a thing, so you know, because of COVID, but I think schools are starting to get back into that. And so I have a, I'm gonna show the site, I think it's in a few slides, but where it talks about a lot of those summer bridge programs where your student can fly out to this college and get this experience and stuff like that at different camps. So sophomores and the freshmen, you know, I, I can sense that they feel kind of like disappointed in our session because we didn't cover like too much. However, um, the main thing is really just going to be like your grades have to be really good so that when we do sit down with you, like the spring semester of your junior year and then into senior year, we have a good foundation. You're not limited to where you can apply to just based off of your grades and your GPA. Um, next slide. And then juniors. So juniors, that's when we kind of start talking to them a little bit more. Uh, for the most part of the fall semester, um, we usually tell them, you know, hey, like right now the, the priority is the seniors. Um, kind of, you know, just make sure you do well on the SAT, your grades. But in the spring is when we really do start talking to um, the juniors. So we go into the classrooms. For one, we reintroduce them to Naviance because for the most part, they know about Naviance since their freshman year. But um, in the spring, we, I will go into classroom with classrooms with Mr. Frau, Ms. Chapman, and then we'll show them how to add colleges to their to the colleges I'm thinking about list, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. Um, we'll show them how to use the scattergrams, which is also another really good feature. But we're going to talk to them about all that stuff. So as a junior, we're, we're, we're building that up. You know, the fall semester, it's mainly like, you know, looking over your transcripts, stuff like that. But in the spring, after we kind of dealt with the seniors, the seniors have applied. Like right now, I think like 90% of the senior class has done college apps. So, you know, we're starting to kind of like wrap up with them. And then we're going to start focusing on the juniors. Um, in the summer times, um, so this upcoming summer, I do a lot of like boot camps and a lot of... Um, yeah, essentially like summer programs and boot camps to kind of help prepare them for that so that when they are in their senior year, it's just a seamless transition. They're not having to do too much. Um, they're not still worrying about writing a personal statement their fresh, I mean, their senior year. And so in the summers is when like we really start hitting them hard. They come on campus, we're sitting with them, we're having writing camps come on campus and stuff like that. So junior year is kind of like building it up. 
And then um, next slide. I was talking about a few of the um, opportunities, but Mr. Nieto, are you still here? We sent this out and Carnegie kind of like spaz. I think he said we had quite a few um, Carnegie students. So this is another one of those opportunities that we were talking about in their ninth, 10th and 11th grade year. If they really just want to get, you know, involved in the college admissions process. And so this is another opportunity. So Mr. Nieto, if you're here, you can feel free to chime in. Yep. Uh, how are you guys? I'm going to go ahead and put the camera if you got me. I imagine you want to see that more than than me, but Shanae, thank you very much for the opportunity um, to to speak. I'd like to say hello to all the families who, who are online. I uh, love to see uh, family uh, parent participation when it comes to their children. I, I will. I didn't talk to Shanae before this, but um, I had the opportunity to to meet with her when she was at uh, at Debakey. And uh, the way the students came up and talked to her, uh, they, they really enjoyed working with her. Uh, great energy, a lot of trust. And, and uh, just, I want you guys to know that your children are in good hands when it comes to working with her directly. Um, I, I sent this information out to Shanae and we got it out to the schools. Uh, we've had quite a bit of interest from your children uh, that are interested in learning about summer leadership programs. I know. Uh, a few people in the chat asked what kind of opportunities. I'll quickly touch on our organization. I'll put some things in the chat and, and my contact information if you guys want to follow up so I'm not monopolizing the time. But we're a nonprofit organization. We've been around uh, going on our 44th year. Um, the, the founder is from Houston. And he's also my father. Um, and uh, very, very proud of the work that our organization has done of offering a, a you know, focusing on high ability youth to offer them uh, summer leadership development programs um, that help them develop on skills and, and outside of the academia and the education, uh, decision making, organizational, and decision making uh, development, uh, big investment in communication enhancement, uh, college networking, uh, networking, and so on from there. Uh, but we work with about 60 universities or more uh, that want access to these type of students because they're all high ability. Uh, all of our programs are during the summer on college campuses throughout the country. Uh, they are very selective. We are uh, uh, inclusive to everyone. You have to have the grades to participate. If you don't, we'll work with the families uh, and the students specifically. And then the final note I'll say, there are tuitions to go to the programs, but HISD and Discover U have graciously, um, uh, we've teamed up with them to underwrite the, the majority of the cost. And so in some of the programs, for example, the freshmen, families might walk away uh, only paying a, a, you know, a minimal amount, $50, for their children to spend four to six days at a summer program at a college campus. And going back into some of the previous slides that uh, Shanae uh, uh, had, had placed, you know, exposure to college campuses, exposure to college networks, college counselors, all those things really increase uh, the, 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 the student to get into the college of their choice. Um, we give students lots of opportunities to attend college fairs. Uh, colleges fly into all of our programs to participate, meet directly with your students. And some programs are 11th grade programs. We bring in 10 college admissions officers for a few days to work directly with your children on the college admissions process. So uh, thank you, Shanae, for the opportunity. Uh, some of your, about 40 students uh, have, have expressed interest to, to participate. I sent an email tonight to some of the parents. So check your spam just in case, uh, but I'll put information you can scan uh, the, uh, I'll put the information in the chat. Feel free to shoot me a message. And tomorrow at seven, we're going to have um, kind of an overview to meet with families, a QA. and a uh, and, and also, again, we're limited to the spots that we have available. We have around 60 for the entire district. So I encourage you guys, if you are interested, to jump on apply or ask me some questions. Uh, and we can continue working together. Uh, for at, at Carnegie, we had a Faith or a Sakwe participated in the uh, junior program, the CWS at Suwannee, the University of South, 
Uh, she was phenomenal. I'd love to get more students from Carnegie to participate. And I thank you guys uh, for your time allowing me to come in and speak with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nieto. Um, yes, we literally met maybe like a few days ago at the Beggy. Um, and honestly, all I did was just send, he sent the information, I sent it out via email to the students. So if you do get access to Naviance, if you can as a parent, just kind of, you know, get that. And if you need help, please let me know. Um, but that's how I sent all the stuff out. And then boom, like 40 Carnegie kids kind of registered. So, and as he stated, we did have a senior Faith. She actually did some of the programs and then a senior at DeBakey did too. And so, like you said, they partnered with over 60 colleges and they're not just in Texas, they're all over the states. Um, and so if you are looking for opportunities for your ninth, 10th or 11th grader to do some of this stuff, um, here's one of them right here. And then on the next slide, I'm gonna talk about another one. If we can go to the next one. Oh, the seniors, that's on the other slide, sorry. Um, and so for the seniors, again, it's gonna be maintaining their grades. But like I said, once they're applying to colleges, on the transcript that the schools receive, all they see is ninth, 10th, and 11th grade. Now, some of those more selective schools might ask for their, um, maybe the first cycle of their senior year grades, they might ask for that. It's very rare, but again, some of them do ask for that. Um, and then also as a senior, they should be finalizing their college list. Um, sometimes we have students that are like, I'm applying to 20 schools and excuse me, that's ambitious, um, but we definitely want students to have a very comprehensive list. So that's a combination of reach schools, target schools, and safety schools. And I think we're gonna go into that in one of the other sessions. Um, but we also need seniors to be very aware of their deadlines. We also understand that they're checking two different emails. They're checking their personal email, their work email, or their school email, I should say, which you know, as adults, we're doing that too. But to them, it just seems like so much work. Um, and so we're just letting them know they need to have some kind of system of being organized. And we typically send stuff like, for example, I send students a college tracker. So all the schools are interested in, they fill in the information, due dates. And so we just kind of been, want to instill and they need to be aware of their deadlines. Also, some of them might be still editing their personal statement, which is totally fine. Um, we also partner with um, a nonprofit called Momentum Education. And so typically what they do is they do career talks. Um, so students who are interested in being accountants, nursing, uh, nurses, doctors, um, they have conversations with professionals in that field, but also they have a team of about, I think like 150 volunteers, and they all have some kind of background in creative writing, teaching, something like that, and they honestly just kind of live to give seniors feedback on their personal statements, so I'll also send that out to them as well, um, and one of the huge things that we try to stress, which I'll go into um, towards the end, but it, they need to update their Naviance. <laughs> Naviance, that is how the student, that's the student's way of communicating with us without actually communicating with us. Also, um, Naviance informs future data. So for some of the parents on the call, if you have a ninth or a 10th grader, um, as the students, as the seniors are getting accepted to schools or it may be even denied, it is very imperative that they update that information in Naviance because it helps let the ninth graders know, oh, like this student applied, it won't say their name or anything, but it'll just say, oh, someone with the same kind of academic profile as me applied to, for example, Carnegie Mellon, and they got in. So Naviance really just um, informs practice, um, but also Naviance communicates with Common App, which we'll talk about in a second, which is another reason why we really drill Naviance into the students, um, but we can go to the next slide. And so we have, we're gonna talk about two college application platforms that the seniors the seniors primarily use. Um, one of them is gonna be Applied Texas, which is the more simpler one. Um, if you're applying basically to schools in Texas, I don't like Rice doesn't use Applied Texas, but um, if they're applying to most Texas schools, they're gonna be using Applied Texas. It's really awesome, very simple because it's one application and once they submit one, it copies over to the other one. So it's very simple. It's really not as hard as the students think. Uh, I, what I'm noticing with a lot of the students is it's just a matter of getting started. And so once I'm sitting down with Mr. Frown, Ms. Chapman, and we're trying to figure out who submitted college apps, who didn't, and we're pulling students, they're like, yeah, well, you know, I have a, a lot of homework. And that's totally understandable. And so once we sit them down and we just get it started, they're like, oh, that wasn't that bad. And so sometimes it's just a matter of just kind of like pulling them in, sitting them down and like, okay, let's just work on it. Um, so one of them is Applied Texas. This is one of the more simpler ones, but most of the students at Carnegie to make HSBVA, they're gonna be using Common App, which is on um, the next one. And so um, Common App is gonna be mainly for your, um, basically your schools that aren't in Texas, even though some schools in Texas are starting to use Common App a little more, but it's definitely gonna be like your out-of-state schools. Also, um, we, your students are applying to very highly selective schools, Carnegie Mellon, um, Rice, 
you name it, they're applying to a lot and they're going to be using um, Common App. And so Common App talks or it syncs with um, Naviance. And so basically the whole essential purpose of Naviance is that's how the counselors are sending their transcripts. Um, the students are requesting letters of recommendation from their teachers in Naviance and that gets sent. So it's a really cool platform because Essentially, like I said, that's how the counselors are sending all their documents, um, council reports, council recommendations, teacher recommendations, transcripts, the school profile, all that stuff is getting sent through Naviance. And um, even though Naviance and Common App directly talk in sync, um, even if your student isn't using Applied Texas, the transcript can still get sent that way too. So, um, but yes, most of your students are going to probably be using um, the Common App, uh, which is it's very similar to Applied Texas. Um, but like I said, it's going to be more of your like out of state schools that are going to be using Common App. Um, we can go to the next slide. Also, um, and we'll talk about this in one of the other sessions, but um, Common App, you're going to see, has a lot of different deadlines. So um, ED, EA, early decision, early action. Um, we'll talk about that in the next one. But that's why students need to be, that's the, the essence of them being organized so they know how they're applying. And so again, here's Naviance. Um, I think um, if it's okay, I was gonna go into the demo here, but if, if I can, I can probably do it at the end. I think that would be better if that's okay. Um, and then also, so once they become seniors, we have something called the Launch Scholars Program. If you're familiar with Emerge, it's not quite um, Emerge because Emerge has a whole application process and it's, it's very dense, but um, we've always had this program around. We're just trying to make it more cohort-based. And so um, basically if students would like, they get cohort advising. So they're with a group of other seniors um, and they're kind of responsible for kind of being like our ambassadors on campus if they want leadership role. Um, but they're responsible for building and supporting, not so much building because we know that Carnegie has it, but the college going culture more so supporting it. And um, we do financial aid incentives, again, parent engagement, and we just provide students with the resources and tools to be successful, which is in a lot of the emails that we um, send through Naviance. And then um, the next slide. And so me being the co-pilot, as you can see, a lot of our themes are very like rocket ship launch kind of themes, but um, throughout the school, throughout the academic school year, we'll do five advising sessions. And so I pull the student from class or, you know, whatever the agreement looks like. I meet with the student. Uh, we kind of talk about, okay, this is where your college list is. We, I help them log into their portals to submit because a lot of students think, oh, I sent them an application and that's it. And that's not quite true. It's like, okay, this school is asking for your test scores. Do you know how to send that stuff? And so just supporting them through that. Um, scholarship workshops, we have one coming up next Tuesday, I believe. So that's gonna be primarily for seniors, but it will be extended to the parents as well. Um, and then also um, just resources and tools. Again, we're trying to fund some field trips and stuff like that. So this is mainly when they get into their senior year. Um, some um, HIC high schools, they have something called Ignite. And so that's more so for 9th, 10th, and 11th. And don't worry, I'm working on trying to get that at our campuses. Um, so hopefully we can get another advisor for that. But uh, the next slide is right. And then also, this is the big doozy. <laughs> so um, this is the second year that this has kind of been a thing, but um, it is a graduation requirement for students to do um, the financial aid application. Again, this is the second year. Um, and so there's two ways for them to meet the requirement. They can either submit their financial aid application. And so that's they're either going to be doing FAFSA or they're gonna be doing TASPA if um, the student may be on a certain visa or they may be undocumented or they may have DACA status. There's the TASPA. Um, Texas is one of the few states that, off that, uh, that offers um, in-state tuition and state financial aid um, to students who may be on a different visa or maybe they're not from here. So if students are interested in getting financial aid but they don't necessarily wanna be considered an international student, um, as long as they're staying in Texas, there, there is a way to kind of uh, work around that. So to complete the graduation requirement, they either do one of the um, financial aid applications, or you know, if they sit down with their parents and they um, agree to do the opt-out form, that has to be signed and submitted to one of their counselors. However, um, we do highly encourage that students do not opt out because if they do secure some kind of scholarship and the scholarship is requiring them to just have the financial aid application on file, um, then that's why we typically don't advise to opt out. However, you know, we usually tell students, you know, sit down with your parent, you guys talk about it. And if you guys feel like you need to sign the opt-out form, then of course we'll support that. Um, we'll have it drafted up and stuff like that. Um, but yes, I just want to put that out there because it is new. I asked a lot of seniors, I think a few weeks ago, and they're like, no, we didn't know that. So yes, um, it is a graduation requirement. Um, and I think this year uh, the registrars have to put the date that they submitted it. 
on um, their transcript. So that's why I've been asking a lot of students for their confirmation emails so that we can have the date for that. Um, the next slide. Oh, and just some helpful stuff. I kind of talked about Khan Academy already. Again, the student accesses that from Canvas and they just go to digital resources. That's also how they access Naviance. Um, also College Board um, is another really great opportunity. They have the, um, the, the opportunity scholarships on there as well. Um, and then the hot scholarships, um, we get those every month. And so this year they started to do it two months in advance. And then they also started adding Although most of the scholarships are going to be for seniors, there are a few that are going to be for ninth, 10th, and 11th grade. Um, and so they started doing it two months in advance. So when we get November, we also get December. So students have ample time to work on their scholarships. And I also sent out a ton of additional scholarships, I think like two weeks ago. And so if you're a parent who would like that, um, just I'll, I'll get that sent out to you guys. Um, next slide, sorry. Yes, the hot scholarships, there we go. This is kind of what it looks like. It's a very extensive list. Um, and again, it'll indicate if the scholarship is for underclassmen, but most of it is going to be for seniors. And these are also typically scholarships for one that are sent out almost yearly and they're scholarships that HISD students get. And so I usually tell students, you know, they may think, oh, well, I'm not gonna get it, et cetera, et cetera. There's actually been somewhat of a decline in scholarships. Um, I guess, I don't know if it's because of COVID and stuff like that, but We've been finding year after year, they're like, oh, well, we only have maybe like 10 students who applied. Like, and oftentimes we'll get emails from people in the community who are like, oh, like I went to this school, like I want to give back. Here's a scholarship opportunity just for this student. If the student just applies, they'll get it. And so we'll, it's very rare, but we'll get those too. And so we'll send that out as well. Um, I think on Tuesday, I'm doing a presentation with the students. I'm doing it in person, but I might do a virtual session as well, but it's for the Terry Foundation Scholarship. It's only offered at like uh, less than 10 Texas public universities. And so letting the students know what that process looks like and that's a really good opportunity. I'll send that out, that information as well. Um, next slide. And then um, this, is, this is for the students. They can get text messages from us. This is just for the students. But um, I think that's everything. If it's okay, I would love to go through Naviance with you guys, just so you can kind of see what your student will be doing in there. Do I have the capability to share my screen? I think so. Yes, oh, I, I can. I do. I do. Thank you. I can make you a host, and I think that will help. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can see. Okay, so here's Naviance. Um, well, actually, let me go in a demo mode. So. I'm not gonna have as many capabilities as an actual student has. However, I can show you. So we'll start from the view of a senior. So this is where the seniors are. Again, like I said, this is where uh, all their transcripts get sent. Um, so for example, um, whenever we meet with the juniors in the spring, we're gonna be like, hey, we're just, we're just gonna tell them to just think about some colleges they would like to go to. And so we're gonna have them go to colleges, colleges I'm thinking about. And they're going to add some colleges to their list. So I'm just going to add a few. This is kind of what it looks like. This is a lot of Houston schools. OK, I already added University of Houston. We'll do. I'll add a few um, selective schools on there as well. And then Carnegie Mellon, we'll add some more. Uh oh. Another highly selective school. Okay. So once they've added it to the colleges they're thinking about, they then, as a senior, and this is only when you have senior capabilities, um, they have to move it to their application list. And so that's why we say Naviance, this is, this is the student communicating with the counselors without them actually communicating with the counselors. Typically, all we have to do is like last week, um, I was sitting with the counselors and we were just going through and saying, okay, like who submitted and who hasn't submitted. And so if their Naviance is updated, we'd be able to see all that information. 
um, also here, it lets them know what they're doing. Um, so if a student is applying early decision, which we kind of abbreviate as ED, what ED means is that if the student applies to the school and they get accepted, they're going, they're committing and it's binding. Typically, um, it's a contract that has to be signed between the counselor, the parent, and the student. So when a student tells me they want to ED somewhere, I get a little nervous, but I just talk with them, hey, did you sit down with your parent? Did you do the net price calculator? With the net price, and we'll go into this in another session, but what the net price calculator is, is it's, it's kind of nosy. It asks for the similar information that you would provide for the FAFSA, and then uh, based on the information that you put in, it may spit out a number. And the number that it spits out is basically saying, this is how much we're expecting your family to contribute based off of the information that you put in. So I usually tell students, um, for example, like with the rice, I'm like, did you sit down with your parent and did you do the net price calculator? Um, I try to sit down and do it with the students as much as I can, but it's just some of this, the information I, I can't provide because I'm not the parent. Um, and so if it spits out a number like 35,000 and you're like, yeah, I sat down with my parent and they said it's cool, it's fine. And you know, Okay, that's that's cool. But we do try to just let the, the parents know that if they apply early decision somewhere, it is binding. It means that if they were to be accepted, they're basically saying that they're going. Um, and again, there's a contract that has to be signed. Um, now, of course, it's not like, you know, they can't force the student to go. So a student can, opt, you know, they can say, hey, I don't want to go anymore. It doesn't look the best um, to other schools, but, you know, that is a thing. And so students do need to indicate their deadlines, how they're applying, because again, this is how the, um, the counselors are sending documents. And so if you apply early action, all that means, which we abbreviate as EA, if you apply early action, all that means is that you're applying early. And if you were to be accepted, um, this means, I'm sorry, early action is if you're applying early, you get a decision early. That's all early action means. And so we also tell students just to, to update this as well. And so you can find a lot of examples. Here we go. And so as you can see, so this. So this is a student's college list, for example. Um, we tell them they must update it often. It'll show their deadlines, it'll show whether or not they requested transcripts, it'll show whether or not that those documentation, that documentation was sent. Um, also, another really cool thing here, if the student has added the school. What they can do is they can look at the scattergrams, which I think is really cool. I hope I have access to see it. Okay, here we go. So what the scattergrams do is, and this probably wasn't the best example, but it goes all the way back until at least 2016. It'll tell you, and this, and this is why it's important for the, the seniors to update their information as they go. It'll tell you how many students from Carnegie applied that year. It also tell you how many were accepted, but since this is a demo account, it's showing a different school, so it's not completely active, but as a student and the parent, they can go in and see this information. And so basically what it'll show is it'll show a, um, a blue circle. The blue circle is the student, and it'll just show kind of where you are. Like I said, this probably wasn't the best example, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, University of Houston. That's the best one. And we've also been telling students, um, UH is no longer a safety school for a lot of students anymore. Uh, once schools kind of get that um, tier one research institution designated designation, that R1, they start to become just a little bit more selective because um, for one, this is how schools are funded by the graduation rate. And so they have to ensure that the students that they're admitting, they have pretty good indicators that they're gonna be successful once they get there. And so um, the students were just astounded by this when they saw UH. But like I said, if you look at Carnegie's, it's literally, it's a bunch of green because a lot of Carnegie students apply to UH, but it'll tell you, okay, this is where I am based off of my GPA and my SAT score. And so if I kind of fall in this room, I have pretty good chances of being admitted but if I fall in a sea of some red, then I probably don't have the best chances of being admitted. And so these are the kind of things that I was saying, like ninth, 10th, and 11th grade. If they do exploration, they can do things like this just to kind of be better informed about their options and stuff like that. But this is what the scattergrams are. This is why they're, we push those a lot. Let's see, now let's go back to colleges I'm applying to. And so again, this is where all their information is going to be. Students can also request letters of recommendation through um, Naviance. And so it's going to be here. So letters of recommendation. And then add a request. And so this is only going to be um, teachers at their school. 
Um, if they wanted a letter of recommendation from someone outside of their school, it's still possible. It just would probably have to be submitted a different way. But um, this will tell you, and like I said, since Common App and Naviance Talk, which is really good, it'll tell you, for example, uh, like, all the schools in their list. So like Baylor is not requiring any letters of recommendation, but they're allowing you to send at least five. Um, Carnegie Mellon wants one, but you can send at least two. Um, and then some of the schools, like for example, UH, um, this college does not accept any letters of recommendation. Um, so it'll tell you that. UT Austin, they're not, they're not requiring any, but they'll allow you to send two. And so Naviance is a, in itself is a really good tracker, college tracker, to be honest. Uh, but this is where the students would go. They would select their teacher and they could, you know, thank you for agreeing to write my letter of recommendation and they would submit the request. Um, and so these are the kind of things we kind of talk to them about in the summer for the most part. But yeah, this is why Naviance is so important. Also, um, again, those emails that I was talking about, I don't think I'll show it here, but um, the student, again, the emails go straight to Naviance and it goes straight to their school email. So if they wanted to look at those messages, they would go here. And this is where they would look at that stuff. But and Ms. Galloway, I just I wanted to remind all the parents on the call today that um, your students um, should have received a login code for Naviance that is meant for the parents. So if any parents want to sign in to Naviance and be able to view um, all of this great information that Ms. Galloway is talking about, um, you can do that. And the way to log in for the first time is using that code that your student received just today. Okay, so it, it went out to their email boxes just today, so you can get that code from them and get signed in. Let's see, for the most part, uh, oh, there's also a super match. Um, Supermatch is a good starting place. However, as far as I think, um, like the information, we usually tell students the school's website is going to be your best bet. And so if you do see some stuff on Naviance, like Supermatch, just always go back to the school's website. Um, excuse me. But the scattergrams are definitely going to be a really good indicator to let a student know, OK, like I have pretty good chances of being accepted to the school, or they're going to be like, oh, I don't know, because it goes all based off of their um, GPA and their test scores. Um, I think for the most part, I think that's all of Naviance, unless anyone has any questions about Naviance. I know I saw there were some questions in the chat too. So Ms. Galloway, um, we do have a bunch of questions in the chat, but before we get there, we do have another um, speaker scheduled uh, for our time. Um, so if, the, if do you wanna do a wrap up or can we move to our next speaker? Oh yeah, honestly, yeah, I'm done. Um, I think someone said, um, can we see which students got into what universities and Naviance? Uh, yes, it'll tell you, it won't say names, but it'll say how many students applied to that school. And then out of those students that applied, how many students got in from Carnegie. But that's if the students were updating their information like they should, but it's pretty reliable information. But uh, yes, I'm pretty much done. I think what I'll do is I'll respond to some um, questions in the, like via chat. That sounds great. That sounds great. Okay, so we have our next speaker, um, uh, Perrin Calzada. Thank you for joining us, Perrin. Uh, Perrin graduated uh, from CDHS just last year. So he's been in college now for a few months. Um, and he has joined us today to um, give us a little bit of uh, insight into his experience at CVHS, as well as going through this process um, for college admissions. Go ahead, Perrin, take it away. Hi, uh, like I said, Perrin Calzada. Uh, I graduated last year as senior at Carnegie. I love this school. I'm really happy to have the opportunity to speak to you all. Uh, everyone can hear me all right, uh, am I coming in? Yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so there's a lot of things that I could talk about for uh, the college admissions, depending on what stage you're in, uh, if your child is a senior or a junior or whatever. But one of the things that I really wanted to press upon everybody is during college admissions, test scores, uh, your GPA, your SAT, uh, the number of APs you took, the grades you got on those, those are important. But what they do is they essentially get you qualified to apply to a certain college. Colleges will uh, really not even look at your application unless you kind of meet those benchmark uh, test scores, those benchmark GPA that they wanna see. 
Um, but past that point, they're actually not super helpful. So you don't have to focus too much on them. Uh, they're good for scholarships, uh, but for actual admissions, it's much more important that you focus on extracurriculars and then most importantly, your essays. Essays are kind of the big thing that gets you into a college without a doubt, kind of much more than the other typical things that you'd see. Um, yeah, um, I have friends that went to a bunch of different schools. I myself am at UH. I'm really happy here. Um, I'm glad to see that it's not considered a safety school anymore. That's <laughs> I didn't know that. That's very interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm having a great time here. And one of the things that I did whenever I was applying uh, to go to UH was I looked into opportunities that UH had that wasn't just the application itself. So uh, I'm in the Honors College here at University of Houston, which is a college that kind of takes the entire population of UH and puts into a smaller, uh, almost like liberal arts type of environment. Uh, I'm an engineering major, I'm doing computer engineering, and my classes, as opposed to like the 45 uh, student classes or the 300 student classes that you kind of see at UH, I have classes with 15 people, 20 people, 12 people. It's a much smaller, much closer knit community. And that's been a really good opportunity for me. It's kind of like a Carnegie inside of the school itself. Uh, so I still get all the bonuses of going to a very large public university, but also the positives of having kind of a smaller, closer knit community. But that's just kind of to say, look into the opportunities that every college has individually, uh, see what they have, look at specific programs, write about them in your essays, uh, email the people that are in those programs, ask if they can help, ask if uh, you can intern with them, anything like that. If, if they'd have any information to give you, because it shows interest and it shows dedication. One of the things that colleges look for more than anything else is to protect their yield, which is essentially out of all the people they extend admission to, how many actually go uh, to that college uh, and especially more prestigious colleges they want to protect that number at all costs so if they don't think that you're going to accept even if they extend an exception to you they won't even try and so it's really important to show that you are dedicated to whatever schools you're applying to and you're not just shooting off random applications with like a pot shot chance like that doesn't help very much um doo -doo -doo. oh yes another point i wanted to make Grad school, a lot of people at, a lot of students at CVHS are going to want to go to med school, go to law school, go to grad school, go to any type of higher education after undergrad. And one thing that's pretty important is it may be financially wise to go to a less expensive undergrad program, do really well there, and then you'll get so many scholarships and opportunities to uh, for like graduate programs at other schools or even at the school that you did end up going to. Um, one of the things my professor tells me is like, if you stay in this engineering program for honors and you go all the way, you're not going to pay a dime for graduate school. And that can be something that's really helpful uh, if you're looking at things financially. So staying in state is, staying in state is obviously cheaper, uh, but it also could, it could increase your chances of having financial success later. Uh, so that's definitely something I wanted to mention. I have friends that went to UH, Texas Tech, A&M, Rice, UT Austin, UTSA, the University of Oregon, Reed, which is a liberal arts school also in Oregon, and a good friend of mine who went to the University of Edinburgh, which is in Scotland. So I have a lot of different diverse uh, uh, options for whenever you're going to go to college. All of us have different paths. We all wanted to do different things. Uh, so kind of see what makes sense to you. Don't be too scared of doing something that's different than your peers, uh, different than what your parents did. Tons of people do. It's your life. It's your college experience. Find what makes you happy. Find what makes sense for you financially, makes sense for you logistically, anything, and give it a shot because it's it's worth it. It's, it's going to be probably the best four years of your life ever. So it's pretty important that you enjoy the choice that you made. Thank you so much, Perrin. Uh, you have, I think, given hope to all the parents on the call today um, that it can be done. And um, it's it's a confusing process. It's a long process. Um, but there is hope. And seeing how happy you look and how articulate you are, um, it, it really warms my heart. So thank you for thank joining you. us. Um, thank you, Ms. Um, Galloway, as well. And um, I just had a quick couple of last words. So I did wanna say that um, 
this call is being recorded. We will be posting the recording on online in a couple of days and email will go out with the link so that you can see um, where it is. And if you missed it or if any of your friends missed it, you want to go back for some links, information, what have you, um, you can do that. Um, we do have a lot of questions in chat. Ms. Galloway is trying to do her best to answer some of them. Um, but anything that we don't get to, we will post that online as well. Um, and that way we can have a Q&A session going. Um, we do have more sessions scheduled. Um, Aliyah, do you want to project the next presentation? Um, I did want to inform you guys that we do have um, additional sessions scheduled, Zoom calls scheduled that um, you can join. Um, starting this this Wednesday, so today, starting with today's call, every Wednesday for five Wednesdays. Um, same time, we will send out a new link in a couple of days um, as soon as we have it. And you should be able to um, log on to Zoom just like you did today. It's from seven to eight. Um, very similar content um, and different topics. So we'll start with Ms. Galloway giving us some information. We'll have um, a speaker to come and tell us about their experience, and then we'll kind of close with um, a PTO message. So these are some of the upcoming topics. I do hope you guys join us for those as well, but if you're not able to, those calls will also be recorded and put online. Um, can we go to the next slide? And then in closing, I also wanted to mention really quickly that we do have several other um, uh, PTO hosted events coming up that I wanted to make sure that everyone knows just in the next couple of weeks. So tomorrow there is a parent and faculty fall social. If you don't have information on this one, go to vanguardian.com or .org. Um, and it's on our website. Um, it's at the Kirby Ice House. And um, it's open to all parents, um, all grades, and uh, several faculty members will be there as well. And I think Ms. Galloway has uh, said that she will be there as well. So if anyone wants to ask her questions in person, please do um, join us and, and um, you know, let's come and have a, a community conversation about college or about school or anything else you wanna talk about. Um, next Tuesday, is the donation deadline for Thanksgiving baskets. If you didn't see my email, uh, multiple email requests come out for this, um, uh, take a look, maybe look in, I think it came out last night. So um, look for that email or go online and we have it. We have a link posted there as well where you could um, go in and donate for some Thanksgiving baskets that we're putting together for, our, um, for some of our CVHS families. Um, next Wednesday, uh, CVHS is hosting a spirit night at Mia's, um, which means that um, Mia's gives back a certain portion of the bill um, from all Carnegie parents that visit there that night um, back to the CVHS PTO. Uh, we also next Thursday have a teacher appreciation lunch happening. Um, as well, on next Thursday, we have CVHS Magnet Tours scheduled, and we are still looking for volunteers to be guide, parents to be guides. We do have uh, 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 some guide notes that we're going to be handing you, so you don't have to go in there and don't know what, you know, if you don't know what to say, we will make sure we give you uh, a little bit of information that you can then come in and inform other parents. And then finally, on uh, next Thursday, we also have the uh, PTO general meeting, which is also on Zoom. And the information for that is also at vanguardian.org. So um, Aliyah, if you can quickly show the next page, there's a couple of links here. Um, so when we post this online, you'll be able to go to these. Um, but there's a link here, become a mem member. If you have not yet become a member, that is really important. Become a member, um, go to vanguardian.org, sign up for membership for the PTO, and you will get all the information you need um, about calls like this one, about events that we're hosting, uh, about volunteer opportunities and um, everything else that's going on in the school. So with that, thank you um, everybody for joining. Um, and I especially want to thank all of the PTO moms that kind of helped put this together. Um, if anyone out there seeing this is inspired to come help us, shoot me an email, volunteers at cvhspto.org. Uh, okay.
Thank you. Sorry, that was awesome.